Hey, it's Pastor John here with Coram Deo Church. Uh, we are currently going through the book of Hebrews, and last week we looked at the first half of Hebrews 6, which is one of the uh, most challenging sections, not only of Hebrews, but of the New Testament. And so what I did was invited people to ask questions, and I'm taking a few moments to answer those questions. And so we'll start with the first question. And it says this, uh, what are the signs a church is apostate? It's hard for me to understand, other than I think that the church would turn away from Christ as the only way to God. So what would other signs be? That's a great um, a great question, and I what I want to do is, is rephrase it and answer it in a way that I'm hoping can be more practically helpful. So um, what are the signs of a healthy church? And a church that has the signs of a healthy church is probably not going to be in danger of falling away. It's probably going to be a healthy environment, someplace that you would want to participate and attend. Um, whereas churches that don't have these signs are probably in danger and could potentially slide into apostasy. But I want to I want to define what are the signs of a healthy church. And to do this, I'm really just leaning on uh, the Reformers and the Reformation, as they were breaking away from the Catholic Church, they were forced to identify what are the signs of a church. And so those are the signs that I will um, suggest to you. <coughs> Excuse me. The first would be um, the Word. Uh, the Reformers were coming out of a context in which the church had a level of authority and the, and the Bible had a level of authority and they were equal. And so uh, even if the Bible didn't say things, the church felt that it was free. Uh, to, to say things. And what that led to was both theological error and also uh, moral misconduct uh, within the church. And that was pretty rampant and widespread. And the reformers rightfully believed, because the scripture teaches it, that the word is God's word. It is inspired of God. It carries the authority of God. The scriptures are God breathed. And so the word is here and the church uh, willingly and lovingly submits itself under the word so that the church is not in a position where it can contradict the word, but the church is always looking to the word. What does the word say? And that's what the church believes. What does the word say? That's what the church teaches and preaches. What does the word say? That's what the church practices. And so what I would want to do is to sit down with elders or pastors or, or go to a, a doctrinal statement and see, um, is this a place that believes in the inerrancy of Scripture or the infallibility of Scripture? Does the church believe, <coughs> excuse me, in verbal plenary inspiration that all of the Scripture uh, is inspired of God? Um, and also, is, does the church... Um, Believe in the Apostles' Creed. It's just a, a doctrinal theological statement that Christians have believed for hundreds of years that helps kind of put guardrails on what we believe and what we don't believe. And so I'd want to know, one, does the church have a high view of the scriptures, uh, inerrancy and infallibility in uh, plenary verbal inspiration? The second thing you'd want to look at, the Reformers pointed out, was the sacraments, that the sacraments are being faithfully and biblically administered uh, within the church body. And there's a reason for that because you have the word that is is coming down to God's people who are receiving the word, um, but then you have the word being acted out, or the reformers would say physical words in the church, and there's a direct connection between the gospel, which says Christ died for you, he shed his blood for your forgiveness, um, and baptism in which uh, a, a believer is united with Christ, his death becomes their death, his resurrection life becomes their resurrection life, and they act this out through the going down in water and the coming um, up out of the water. And it's very similar with, um, with communion uh, as well. Communion um, is a physical word. Jesus said that, um, that he was bread from heaven and that we needed his body to live. And so when we come forward and we are taking bread and, and wine, we are acting out um, this dependency upon Christ and we're receiving these very ordinary things, bread and wine, um, which have become uh, symbols of God's sustaining um, 
power and grace in our lives. And so uh, I want to know, is there baptism? Is there communion? Are those things regular uh, activities within the church? Are they being faithfully administered? And then lastly, uh, you just want to look for church discipline. Church discipline uh, is a gift. It's a means of grace. It's something that God has given to the church because uh, we are prone to error and we are prone to sin. And so church discipline is a process by which members of the community and sometimes, if necessary, pastors of the church will lovingly confront uh, somebody who is headed into sin. And um, because pastors are responsible to care for the soul's of the congregation, uh, you're going to want to know that you're in a church community where the pastors love you enough uh, and are willing to uh, gently and compassionately and graciously uh, approach you if that is ever necessary. So I would want to know, um, have the pastors um, carried out church discipline and how did they carry it out and how did that, uh, how did that turn out? And I think if you're looking for those three signs, is, is the scripture held as the ultimate authority? Are the sacraments faithfully administered and does the church practice church discipline? Um, that's If the church has those three signs present, um, it's probably going to be a healthy church. If the church doesn't have those things present, it's probably not going to be a healthy church. It is going to be more likely to be in danger of, 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 of apostasy. So I hope that's helpful. If it's not, if you're looking for something else, feel free to ask another question. Otherwise, um, I hope to see you this Sunday. Take care.